welcome back to the channel and welcome to this specific segment where I talk about why did I take this trait. In this case, this is a very important you know, episode because this is a losing trade. In this video, we want to go over why did I take this trade and why was it a losing trade and what could have I done in order for me to save myself from losing on the market. Even though I, you know, this is probably one of the, those trades where you lose and you, you feel like, you know what, it's okay. It wasn't your fault. The market got manipulated and all that stuff. In hindsight, yes, you could have, you know, put your stop loss, limit your risk here and there. But using the strategy that I'm using, you can see from my previous trade that we've been killing it with over 200%, 400%. So it is risky, but it also rewards really, really good because it allows the markets to have a breathing space. And as I always say, you need to be overfunded and under leverage. Now, with regards to being overfunded, some of you guys don't have the money. So what I'm preparing uh, add drop videos that can add drop about ten thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars on your wallet so that you can get started with a huge capital in the world of trading now let's get started with today's video looking at why did i take this trade the losing trade here is metic you can see that i was trading around 10x leverage now we're gonna go through why did i take this trade not only this one but also I was also long on BNB, not only that, also ADA. You can see I lost about 1,700, 1,800 US dollars around about that. So the reason why we basically just lost these trades is simply because of what is happening in the US with the regulations and more specifically, this guy called Gary Gensler, because he's the one who's just screwing everything up. Now, I was very, very confident when I took this trade. I even mentioned that on our Discord right here, that I'm very confident with the trades that we're actually taking right now, not knowing that few hours later, this guy called Gary Gensler is going to go and just crush the market. And what happened after that, because when I took the trade, the trades were actually very profitable in the beginning. However, Robin Hood started delisting these currencies and you can see the delisted currencies here is polygon metric and also ada solana and two of these you know assets were actually assets that i was holding on long positions like i said in hindsight it's very easy for people to say well you should have just put your stop loss money risk management blah 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 and all that i can show you based on my experience and what i've been doing over the years that very often the market will go and touch your stop loss and you lose you don't lose the entire balance but you lose a trade and that is very detrimental at least in my experience on the next trade that you take because you're not so confident however with a strategy where you allow the market to actually have a breathing space uh, because the market sometimes is manipulated sometimes exchanges will go and take liquidity or sometimes whales will come in and manipulate the market. In cases like that, you don't want to be finding yourself, you know, being taken out because sometimes you get the market hitting your stop loss maybe three or four times in a row. And that really messes up with your mental uh, capability to execute trades because next you'll be like, oh, what if this going to hit my stop loss again? So this is metric here. Uh, so we were long around about this line here. And I think this is more or less where we got taken out of the market but you can see the drop here was very very significant it dropped by 35 percent which is huge so the only way you would have survived that is if you're trading with 3x leverage that's obviously something that we're going to talk about because most pro traders that's what they're doing so in order for me to succeed in the world of trading i need to also copy the people that are that are killing it on the market and this is one of them if we look at this trader here, we can see that he has only one loss in, I don't know how many trades, maybe 15, 20 trades. And right now we can see that he's currently on a position where he's losing 66,000 US dollars. But the nice thing that we can see from this trader is the amount of leverage that he's using. Sometimes he's using 1x, 2x, we can see 3x, 2x, 3x. And that's why he's successful over time because he's overfunded and under leverage it is extremely important for you to understand this concept so we're going to talk about this in other videos this is going to be a separate video on its own make sure that you subscribe on a channel so that we can look at these 
pro traders that are trading successfully on the market and copy exactly what are they doing right. So this is what I always tell people, especially in our group, because I sometimes see a lot of people trading with big leverage. For example, here you can see this trader is trading with 20x and is trading Arbitrum. Yes, you can make money, but for me, it is very risky for you to trade 20x on Arbitrum. If you look at my previous trade that I take on Arbitrum, I'm always using 10x. Even though I'm using 10x, sometimes I do have losing trades, but my win ratio on you know this trading pair is extremely high. I think I've made over $20,000 just trading Arbitrum. So again, we're going to be making separate videos on why did we take these trades and why these trades were successful so that you can look at these videos maybe two months down the line or whenever you're watching these videos and you'll be like, okay, I think I get what this guy is doing. You understand? Because trading is extremely, extremely easy if you know what you're doing, but it can be extremely difficult if you have no idea what you're doing. So this is what I do for a living. I don't consider myself a pro trader. I would have if I had completed this trade here on profits because this would have been my 20th trade straight win. This would have been straight win 20 trades. That's for me is when you you be like, okay, I'm a pro trader, especially if you're making 100% per trade, 200% as we've been making here um, on our channel. I think you can see that our previous sort of like trade that we took. In fact, that video is coming up next after this video. So keep watching. You can see that video. I made over 216%, but look at the leverage. I'm just using 7%. That's why it's extremely important for you to actually be overfunded, but under leverage. In this case, I wasn't overfunded. I would think I was just trading with about 3,000 or rather 350. And I think ended up making a profit of 800 to 900 US dollars. And you can see that you can make a lot of money if you manage your leverage and manage your risk. So the reason why I basically just lost this trade was simply because the market on that day got manipulated. Binance was issued um, a court order. So if it wasn't for, you know, Gary Gensler doing the things that he's doing there, I'm very confident that this trade would have been successful. That's what I even said on our Discord, that I'm very confident about the trades that we're taking. Why was I confident? If you're looking at where we actually went long, uh, what I was anticipating here is that the market was maybe going to come down here. If I can get this, what's going to come down here and maybe here and then create a W pattern. That's also another risk when you try to counter trade these trading patterns because you can get liquidated like that. But that's what I was looking at on ADA. And when we look at ADA itself, at the time of me going long, um, I'm just going to come here and measure from the top here. You can see that ADA had dropped about 14%. In fact, um, if we look, this is the peak. ADA had dropped about 20%. So it's not very often that you see this asset being down 20%. And it hasn't been on these, you know, territories in a very long time. Maybe let's move this to a daily time frame and you can see that matic hasn't been where it's trading now for a very 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 long time for most of the time it's been trading up here and for that reason i thought i should take a swing long position now let's move to bnb again this is the same story the last time we saw bnb trading under 200 us dollars was last year during the ftx saga and you can see that because of that you know i had all the reason for me to then anticipate a swing long position. Now I have no doubt that these assets will begin to bounce off from here. Unfortunately, those trade, you know, were not successful, which we sort of like going back to square one, which is a reset. I want to take 20 trades and those trade must be winning trade. That's when I'll, you know, be looking at myself and say, wow, you're doing really, really well. Uh, even though right now I consider myself doing very well in terms of my PL, but obviously it will never be enough. And like I said in the beginning, I think on a channel now, the direction that I want to take is because I see a lot of people who are following me are trading with very, very small amount, $100, uh, $50 and all that stuff. I think there's an opportunity for you guys to, to get yourself some airdrops, which could help you fund your account. So I'll make a dedicated video on airdrops. So I've been doing extensive amounts of research with regards to the airdrop that we should be expecting this year. So I'll be focusing the next 
two months or so i'll be dedicating those months into ad drops that i think are going to be coming up in the future and most importantly ad drops that i think are going to be huge so i'll show you all the steps that you need to take in order for you to you know potentially qualify for those ad drops so that you can have those funds to then fund your account that's what you can see here that when you know you're a trader and you have a little bit of funds you can you know, risk very low amount, uh, but still be able to make $100,000 on a single trade, $10,000, $20,000, $2,000, $25,000, $77,000, $77, $77, that is very, very easy, especially if you have huge amount of capital. So that's what we're going to be talking about in our next videos. All right. So in closing, let's talk about what have I learned from this loss, because it is extremely important that you take a lesson out of every trade, whether it was a win or lose. In this case, it was very clear what I should have taken into consideration. And that is what was happening at the news at that time. If we look here, we can see that news started surfacing that Robin Hood was delisting Matic, ADA and Solana. And that should have been a clear indication for me to exit the market. So it's important to have a look at the asset that you're trading and if there is any negative or positive news about those assets. Another thing to take into consideration is not being biased towards your trade. Whether the trade is losing or you're actually making money on the trade, you don't need to be biased. The reason why I say that is simply because when you're biased, you're sort of like married to the idea or you're married to the trade and you basically just think, in the case of a losing trade like this one, you're thinking it's going to recover, it's going to recover, and it doesn't recover. Or in the case of uh, when a trade is going in your favor, you're thinking you're going to make more money, you're going to make more money. You need to get to a point where you like you make a decision to take profit or cut your losses. So that is very, very important. So that's one thing I should have taken into consideration because the news actually came to me that now Robinhood is going to be delisting these assets and obviously, because of that, the market started tanking, right? So I should have cut my losses. Had I cut my losses at that time, I was probably going to lose 500 or 600. Another thing that I should have taken into consideration was to, you know, putting my stop loss in place, especially with my strategy, always put your stop loss in profit. In this case, you can see that if we come back here to, let's say, our daily signals, for example, I always teach these things. Whenever you're taking a trade, always put after your entry you put your stop loss so you make sure that your stop loss is either break even or in profit so then you let the market just come down here then you know that's the current price here is the target these are the type of things that i should have taken into consideration and put them in place on my trade because when i look at my ADA trade, it was once 20% in profit. And also if I look at my BNB trade, that trade was also about 20% or 25% in profit. At some point it was up by 160. So that's more than 20% in profit. So I should have obviously came and put my stop loss even at break even because as long as you don't lose money, you're okay. You know, so those are the things that I should have put in place. But in this case, I just wanted to treat this as a swing trade, which was very wrong of me. I should have at least put those two stop loss and I would have saved a lot of money. So that's the lesson that I took out of this trade. Like I said, whether a trade is a win or is a loss, you must always take a trade or a rather a lesson out of those trade. For example, I can show you a trade here where I was actually long. This is the trade here where I was actually long on Arbitrum and I actually decided, you know what, I'm going to cut my uh, my long position as much as I'm making profit. I actually ended up closing the trade with 500, about 600 US dollars. But I knew that, yes, I'm making money now and there's a potential of making money, but the market and the chart was telling me, look, this thing is going to reverse. And immediately after I closed the trade, it's just started reversing and I was able to close out of the trade and making profit. So it's very important to know these things. Obviously, we're going to come back to all these trades that we've been taking here and also having a look at an in-depth analysis on those trades, whether they were win or losses and look at how much money we were making and how much money we're losing. But most importantly, why did we make money on that trade or why did we lose money on that specific trade? So stay tuned and make sure that you subscribe on this channel because this is where I break down not only my current trade, but also the trades that I've taken in the past. Not only do I give signals, not only do I give technical analysis, 
but also you need to understand how I trade so that when you get a technical analysis from me or a signal, you know exactly how to treat that. Speaking of signals, when you come to our Discord here, you can see that I haven't really been posting my signals. However, that's is about to change because I just got out of the meeting right now and there is a guy with a very, very, very good win rate. And I've managed to get this guy on board to come to our community and share with us his signals, technical analysis. So get ready. You know, this, this signal tab here is going to be extremely, extremely busy from now on. Again, always apply risk money management. Never trade with your entire collateral. What I always do is that I trade or rather expose about 10 to 20% of my margin. So make sure that you check out the video showing up on the screen right now because that video will help you level up your trading game. I'll see you on the next one. I'm Fossi Designer. Goodbye. Peace.